one. I will be the one. Fill me now. Fill me now, Jesus. Fill me now, Jesus. Let your power fill this room. Let your glory fill this room. Till our lives are completely changed. Let your power fill this room. Let your power fill this room. Let your power fill this room. Come on, y'all. Let your power fill this room. Let your power fill this room. Till our mindsets are changed. Let your power fill this room. You can do it. Let your power fill this room. We're ready. Let your power fill this room. We're ready. We're ready for your glory. We're ready for your presence. Let your power fill this room. Let your power fill this room. Oh, be exalted. Be lifted high. Jehovah 
Say you're the most high God. 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 And you look loud. You are the most high God. 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 You are higher than You are higher lifted up. No other name higher than yours. No other name greater than yours. Say you're the most high God. 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 Say you're the most high God. You're the most high God. You're the most high God. Come on, somebody worship the Savior. Come on, let's give them glory. Let's give them honor. Let's give them praise. Because he's the most high God. Say, you're the most high God. Deserve the most high praise. Deserve the most high praise. Deserve the whole high praise. The most high praise. The most high praise. You're deserving of it. You're deserving of it. You're deserving of it. You're the most high king. 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 You are everything. You are everything. You are everything. You are everything. You are joy and sorrow. You are everything. You are my hope for tomorrow. You are everything. Say everything. Everything. When I'm down and out, everything. When I'm out my way, everything. You are everything. I'm regulator. Everything. My promise keeper. Everything. Everything. When my world's upside down, when my children are going crazy, when my bills are due, you are everything. When there's no hope for tomorrow, you are everything. You are everything. You are every. Somebody clap your hands in here. He is everything. Say you are everything. You are everything. You are everything. You are everything. 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 Everything, you are everything. You are everything. You are everything. You are everything. When I lose my mind, when I go my own way, when I can't see clearly, when I lose all my hope, when I lose everything I have. You are everything. When I have no strength, when I have no put, you are everything. You are everything. You are everything. You are everything. Hold on, hold on. Okay, the devil real man, but it's okay. This is a great opportunity for us to get on one accord. We're gonna do, we, this is class. How many lost something in your life before? All right, we can agree. How many sometimes run a little low on bills?
we can agree, or have in the past. How many just, you know, going through stuff, job acting crazy? Uh-huh, so we can agree on some things. So what I, so what I want us to do, I'm going to call some things out. When it sounds familiar, I need you to get real radical in this place. Y'all hear me? And I'm going to do it with y'all. For those that need a little help, just do a little skip, a little walk or something. We're going to get it together. But I just think back on some things. I can think back on some things. And if you need a little bit of encouragement, our pastor celebrated her birthday this week. And we didn't celebrate a memorial. We didn't have a little celebration of life. But she was able to breathe. She able to walk and no pain is in her body. No cancer is in her body. So we have something to celebrate. So I'm gonna start here. Say, uh, you are everything, everything. You are everything. everything. My bill money, everything. everything. My doctor, everything. everything. My regulator, everything. everything. My home, everything. everything. My God, everything. everything. You are everything. No cancer, everything. No cancer, everything. You are everything. You are everything. You're my peace. You're my joy. You're my peace. You're my peace. You're my peace. You're my peace. My wife, my God. Why, why, Maker? You are everything. You are everything. You are everything. Everything. You're everything to me. Everything. Everything. You're everything to me. 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 You are everything. 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 You did more than I ever expected. You did more than I ever expected. You did You 
When they said it was all they tried, the doctor said, I can't do no more. You did more. But you did more. You did more. No trace, no spot. You did more. No weak You did more. 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 Try to praise for y'all leaders. There was a victory left for life. Come on. Come on. There's a life in the room. Come on. We're not at a funeral, but we are able to open our mouths and give God glory for what he's already done, what he's doing. So I want you to do, put your feet on the ground. We're going to do it together. What? Everybody, everybody praise now. Yes, Lord Jesus. Come on, put your hands together. You did more. One more time. You did more than I ever expected. You did more than I ever expected. You did more than I ever expected. You did more than my doctor expected. You did more than my family expected. You did more. You did more. Than my bank expected. Sorry about that. You did more. You did more. Than my husband expected. It's all right. You did more. 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 Sometimes we get it twisted. And we think it's of our own selves. Our mama and auntie. But he did more. Than I ever expected. He did more than I ever expected. He did more than I ever expected. I'm living it now. He did more than I ever expected. I can see it now. He did more than I ever expected. He did more. Than I ever expected. He did more. He did more. He did more. He did more. One more time. He did more. He did more for me. Lord, you thought of me, Jesus. You kept me on your mind. You kept me on your mind. At the foot of a cross, I prayed. Jesus, remember me. Jesus, remember me. 
at the foot of the cross, I pray. Jesus, remember me. Jesus, remember me. At the foot of the cross, I pray. Jesus, remember me. Jesus, remember me. At the foot of the cross, I pray. Jesus, remember me. Jesus, remember me. Oh, 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 when we come in your presence, oh, 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 remember me, remember me. Oh, 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 when we come in your presence, oh. oh Come on, all over this building, can we lift our hands? I think this is a good time. I said if God has done anything for you, I think this is a time for us to lift our hands and begin to give him praise, adoration, worship, and glory for all the things he has done. Oh God, I thank you for being my help. Thank you for being my rock. Thank you for being my anchor. Thank you for being my shield. Thank you for being everything to me. Thank you for being my doctor. Thank you for being my lawyer. Thank you for being my help. Thank you for being my counselor. Thank you, Lord God, for being everything. Father, we praise you and we honor you and we thank you for there is no other God like you in all of the earth. If I had 10,000 tongues, that wouldn't be enough. 
to praise you for all the excellency, for all the wonderful things you have done. For you keep blessing me over and over and over again. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one that trusteth in him. Father, we praise you. Now can we put our hands together and begin to give the El Shaddai and the Elohim and Jehovah Rapha and Jehovah Shalom the biggest praise. Look at somebody and say, God has been good to me. Come on, find somebody else and say, God has been good to me. Oh, come on, look across the aisle. Look across the aisle and say, God has been good to me. You don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. <laughs> oh, God, come help me. You don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. I wasn't always this cute. I wasn't always this put together. I wasn't always this sane. You don't know what God has. <laughs> you don't know what God has done. You don't know the ways he's made, the doors he's opened. You don't know how God has kept me through many dangers, toils, and snares I have come. But the Lord has delivered me. Oh, tell somebody, that's why I praise him like I do. Tell somebody, that's why I praise him like I do because you don't know how far he's brought me from. You don't know what he's done inside of me. I wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't for the grace and the mercy and the favor of God and all the things that he's turned around on me. Have you ever had God turn something around for you? Okay, let me sit. Have you ever had God turn something around for you where it looks like life was going one way, but God turned it around right in the nick of time? And he said, no, 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 no. I got something else planned. I got something bigger. I got something better. I got something greater for you. And I'm getting ready to turn this around. Oh, the scripture says it like this. What the enemy meant for bad, God turned it around and made it for my good. Come on and shout glory. Not at your shit. I said shout glory. I wait for somebody to catch it. Uh, that you don't know uh, that surely goodness and mercy follows me all the days of my life. And I'm here today because of grace. I'm here today because of, because of mercy. I'm here today because of favor, I'm here today. Because he looked beyond my faults. And he saw my needs. Woo! Woo! Okay, I feel something. I feel something on me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, tell you, neighbor, you might have to give me 30 seconds. You might have to give me 30 seconds because I... Because I know that I know. I know that I know. When the enemy came in like a flood. When the enemy came in like a flood. I said when the enemy came in like a flood. When it seemed like everything was going wrong. When it seemed like there was no way out. When it seemed like I couldn't see up. When it seemed like I didn't know where I was going. When the enemy came in like a flood. My God raised up a standard. Hallelujah. 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 See, some of y'all trying to wait until life gets perfect. But life don't have to be perfect for me to praise him. Because my Bible says when the praises go up, then the blessings come down. 
So I know how to praise him even when life is not perfect. I know how to praise him even when I'm waiting in like earnest expectation of what God's getting ready to do because praise makes God bigger in my atmosphere. And if I praise him, everything begins to bow at the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Ooh, God's going to do something here this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Lord, I feel a breakthrough in this atmosphere. Oh, God, I feel a bell parasim type of moment. I feel a bell parasim. Where is the God of the break? Where's the God of the breakthrough? Huh? Where God breaks through and shows out huh? just for your. Oh, tell somebody, God is going to do something in here this morning. I came with an expectation for God to do something. Maybe it's just me. Am I the only one that said I came with an expectation for God to do something? Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. We honor the Lord this morning and we celebrate this mighty woman of God, apostle, pastor, prophetess. Can we give it up? Can we give it up for the woman of God? Oh, y'all kind of weak. I said. Can we give it up for one of the angels of this house and all that she has done and labored to help us get to this place that we are today? I'm not going to hold you long, but I'm asking you to stand to your feet and grab your Bibles and let's go to Genesis chapter 35, verse number two and verse number three. I want to tag this text and I'm going to be out your way. I believe God's going to do something in this place. Wherever two or three are gathered together in his name, there he is in the midst, I believe. Look at somebody and say, it is not by chance you are here. Yeah, I believe God set you up for the come up. You'll catch that later. I said, I believe God set you up for the come up. Yes, Genesis Chapter 35, verse number 2, verse number 3, reading from the New International Version of the Scriptures. Jacob told his household and all who were with him, get rid of the foreign gods that are among you. Purify yourselves and change your garments. Then, everybody say then. Let us arise and go unto Bethel. I will build an altar there unto God who answered me in the day of my distress. He has been with me wherever I have gone. While we're in this altar series, I want to use for my theme or topic, which is a play on words. <laughs> Y'all know how God does me sometimes. But today I want to talk from the topic, alterations. Alterations. A L T A R. Alterations. <laughs> Father, I thank you for this moment. I thank you that there'll never be a moment like this again where you have assembled all of us in this place and space that we might hear from heaven. God, I sense that there are people in here that need to hear the voice behind the voice. They need to hear what their next marching orders are for this season they're in. God, many of them on the cusp, on the, the precipice of God, the biggest move of God and outpour they have ever experienced. I sense many of them have been waiting on some promises for years, and God, they're now in the moment where things will not be delayed anymore but that you're going to open up the windows of heaven and pour them out a blessing that they don't even have room enough to receive. So God, circumcise our ears, circumcise our hearts, 
Let the word of God fall upon good ground that it may take forth God root and bring forth fruit in this season. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Everybody say amen. You may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. I believe this particular series is properly aligning us as the body of Christ. It is this series that God is using to help refocus us on the things that really matter. Because if the truth be told, sometimes we spend too much time on things that don't matter. Things that don't move the needle. Things that really don't even pertain to who we are called to be and where God is taking us in this season. So God told us last week, and I think it's worth saying again, he says it is important that we build altars before we build platforms. Because sometimes our platforms make us puffed up. Platforms make us think more highly of ourselves (laughs) than we ought to. But it's something about building an altar that makes you go low. Building an altar makes you check yourself Building an altar makes you look inside before you look outside. Building an altar makes you judge yourself before you start judging somebody else. Building an altar is that thing that makes me say, I got to stay in the face and in the presence of God. God is calling all of us as his children to build altars because they now signify the presence of God in all areas of our life, which means everywhere I go and everything I do, I need to know how to build an altar. Isn't it a sad thing that we know how to build our brand, but we don't know how to build an altar? And we wonder why sometimes the church has lost the true essence of its power and the thing that it is really called to do because we are so busy building things that God is not pleased Oh, oh God, oh God, I could park right there. I could park right there. We, we want to build the things that makes man say, you're so awesome. You're so great. You're so wonderful. But sometimes God says you got to decrease in order for him to increase in your life. And that only comes through knowing how to build altars. I could be wrong, but I'm not. And I know that there is this authentic display of the power of God for the church that is for now okay okay that there is this move of God that is ready that is prime that is proper for now but God says the only way I'm gonna be able to usher in this move is that it will only come by the way of building altars which means some things have to go in order for you to build altars Because for some of us, your focus has been off. Your focus has been off and you have let people make you put your time and your energy in places that are not conducive for the move of God for this season. Do I have a church this morning that says, I know that God is ready to do something that I've never seen before. Because it's one thing to say that you are a Christian But for this move of God, people need to see that you are a Christian. Okay, let me me say that again. It is one thing to say that you are saved, that I'm a child of God and I'm a Christian. But for this authentic outpour of the presence and power of God that is for now, people don't need to just hear you say that you are a Christian. They also need to see that you are a Christian, which means I must be a doer of the word. And not hearers only deceiving my own self, which means I got to be conscious of what I do in every environment that I'm in. Can your coworker find Jesus by looking at your life? Can your spouse find Jesus by looking at your life? Can your children find Jesus by looking at your life? Can the world find Jesus by looking at the lives? Okay, okay, I don't like that kind of preaching. Can, can they find Jesus by looking at the life that you live? So in our text, 
this morning, we're introduced to a man by the name of Jacob. For the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about Abraham and all that God did through Abraham. But today, we're going to talk about Abraham's grandson by the name of Jacob, because Isaac was Jacob's father. And if you're really a scholar of the text, you would notice that oftentimes you will see this phrase, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, reason being because they are considered the progenitors of the faith wherewith the Abrahamic covenant has been fulfilled and the nation of Israel has been birthed. But when you look at that, that, that lineage, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Jacob was the wild card. <laughs> Jacob was, was the wild card because his character was sometimes questionable. Hmm. Jacob was both good and bad. Jacob was crafty and deceitful at the same time. Have you ever had this two nature? Okay, okay. Have you ever had these two natures working in you that are in conflict with each other? <laughs> that when I would do good, I noticed that evil is always present with me. And there's times I find myself struggling with some stuff and I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Jacob, Jacob, Jacob. No, nobody would really want Jacob because he was the wild card. When he looked at Jacob, you had to know which Jacob we going to get today. <laughs> Which Jacob we going to get today? Because you know Jacob is sometimes he can be, you know. And it's interesting because Jacob conned his own brother out of his birthright. Jacob deceived his aging father just to get what he wanted at the time. Jacob was this kind of selfish man that when I read the text... It's like, wow, God, you can use Jacob? Which blessed my life because once Jacob had a real encounter with God, all of a sudden his old things begin to be passed away and all things became new. Have you ever had this real encounter with God that said now all of a sudden things are changing and the things that I used to do I don't do no more and the places that I used to go I don't go anymore because I've had a real encounter with God and now my life is beginning to change. I'm not the same man that I was before because I had a real encounter with God, with God, I know you're sitting there with your little cute church, a church, church suit on right now, but let's be honest. You know what it's like to be Jacob. You know what it's like to have some. You know what it's like for, to have others look at you like, oh, I know what it used to be. But one encounter, tell somebody, one encounter with God, one in one face to face, one real touch from him will cause everything to change so that you don't know this new me because I've had a real encounter. Yeah. Who am I talking to this morning? Somebody has had a real encounter with God that has caused everything to shift and to change and you are now becoming brand new. And all of a sudden, that says, if God could use Jacob, that means he can use me too. Because I know where I come from, and I know what I used to do. And thank God that he showed me that if he can use Jacob, yeah. Yeah. he can use me too. Tell somebody, God can use me. God can use me. God can use me. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You can't. Hold me hostage to the first version of me that you met. Because you don't know what me and God have going on. You don't know the work he's been doing. You don't know the change that's been taken down. You don't know how he's been working in me, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Don't hold me hostage to the first version of me that you met because you're going to miss your blessing because I might be the one that God's going to use in this season to help you. Okay, okay, let me stop, let me stop. Hey, hallelujah! 
you might miss your blessing because you don't know who God's getting ready to use. The same person that you walked over might be the person that God's getting ready to use. The same person that you dogged might be the person that God's getting ready to use. Hey, 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 hey. Thank God that he showed me that he can use Jacob. That means he can use me too. Who, who am I talking to this morning? Don't count yourself out. Don't count yourself out. Don't count yourself out. Because if he can, we all got a past. But the good news is we all got a, a past, which means my present is something different from my past. So don't judge me, judge yourself. <laughs> Woo, so in our text, in our text, in our text, in our text, in verse 1, Genesis 35, verse 1, we read a very key fact as it relates to what God is doing within Jacob's life. Look at verse number 1 right there. Then God said unto Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel and live there. And make an altar there unto God who appeared to you <laughs> when you fled from your brother Esau. Now, it had been 20 years since Jacob had visited Bethel. And now God is calling him back to a place that he once visited before. He's calling him Back to her place where his spiritual roots ran deep. He's calling him back to the place where he first found God and that spiritual fervor was there. Because sometimes when life happens, we can lose the thing that we first had. It's very easy to kind of walk away from your first love. You know when you first fell in love with God and that intensity and that hunger and that drive and that fervency that you had before you had all the stuff you got right now. Before you had the title, before you had the money, before you had the car, before you had the boo, before you had all that, when you first met him, it was just you and him, and there was this everything that he was to you because you ain't have nothing else. And in the text of the scripture, God is saying, Jacob, for this new fresh thing that I'm getting ready to do for you, I need you to go back to Bethel. Okay, okay, okay. So for this new move, of God that he has for you, he's saying, I need you to go back to where your spiritual roots ran deep. Because sometimes we try to contemporize church. And we like the kind of easy things of church. But there is no substitute for the foundational things that make your spiritual roots run deep. Oh, I know we're going to get no amens here. Sometimes we got to go back to the fasting and the prayer and the intercession and the tarrying at the altar until God does a breakthrough. Sometimes we got to go back to the shutting in with just you and Jesus. Sometimes. Oh, tell somebody, go back, go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. You remember, you remember, you, you remember what it used to be like when you first found it. Well, you ain't have no money. You had to pray every day. Father, in the name of Jesus, I need you to provide this today. But now we so casually forget how important he is now that we have a whole lot of stuff. So has your stuff caused you to miss God? Jacob, I need you to arise and go back to Bethel. And I love the language in the text. He says, Arise, Jacob, which means I need you to shift your posture. Yes, sir. I need you to shift your position. I need you to look up from the place that you are. Yes, sir. 
Jacob, 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 I need you to arise because there's a higher place that I have for you. Oh, God. Okay, okay, Jacob was in this town called Shechem. And Bethel was about 30 miles away. Bethel was about a thousand feet higher than Shechem was. So even in the literal context, he is saying, Jacob, look up because Bethel is not down here. Bethel is in a higher place that I'm calling you to. Bethel is not in the place that you're comfortable in. But Jacob, I need you to look up because I got something more for you. But it's at a higher level than the place you're at right now. And the Lord told me to tell somebody this, this morning, he needs you to look up. Because what you're asking him for is not on this place that you're in now. You got to look up and see all that God has for you. Which means I got to elevate my mind to another level. I got to give on another level. I got to serve on another level. I got to pray on another level because there's more to this. I know this right here looks good, but I need you to arise and I need you to shift and go to another place so that you can really get everything that I have for you because Shechem can be a dangerous place when an authentic move of God is happening. Mm. Shechem can be a dangerous place when a real authentic move of God is happening because, because the temperature of Shechem is too low. Woo. The temperature of Shechem is too low. I need you to elevate because we know that heat rises. I need you to elevate Oh, God, I, I need you to elevate because the temperature has been too low down here on this place. That's why you're aggravated and you can't seem to get stuff working like you want to because he's saying this is not the place that I have for you, that I need you to elevate and go somewhere else. I need you to, look at this, I need you to move. Look somebody and say Move. Okay, okay, they're here. Look, look, look somebody and say, move. Okay, okay. Arise and I need you to move, which means that I've got to now get out of the place that I'm in and I got to move to the next level that God has for me. It's moving time. Look somebody and say, it is moving time. Oh, oh, tell me again, it's moving time, which means that there's a new address, new location. That God has for me, which means that my finances got to move. My conversations got to move. My education's got to move. Tell somebody, it is moving time. Because you're trying to get the new thing without moving. You're trying to get the fresh thing without moving. And what has happened is that's why you've been idle and seem like there's been no real progress because you, because you got to now move in the place that God has for you or else you will never see what God really wants to give you if you stay in this place called Shechem. Movement. You might have to move to another place emotionally. Lord Jesus, I just hear something in this place. How long you gonna grieve over your ex? How long you gonna grieve over the last thing? You may have to move even your emotions in order to really lay hold on what God. How long you gonna grieve over what you lost in the last season? And you're stuck. And God says, I want to give you more, but there's no room for me. Wow. Wow. Woo. Woo. Wow. 
there's no, there's no room for me. I want to give you more, but there's no room for me because your emotions are filled with stuff from the old season. And I want to bless you, but I need for you. Come on, elbow somebody say, move, 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 move. Move, move, move. Oh, Lord, I sense that in my spirit. How long are you going to grieve over what your child did? God wants to bless your family in a brand new way. But you won't move. Notice, notice what he says. That I need you to arise, go unto Bethel, move and settle there or live there. Settle there, live there. Which means in this place, I have to live in the place where the presence of God is. That I can't be in and out. That I can't let things and people keep me from moving into the place where the presence of God is. Which means I have to be bold enough and I have to guard this to know that that's coming to draw me away from the presence of God. Oh, God. I need for you to live there. Not just visit there. You know how we have them times and we're in that place with God. Things are great. Things are awesome. And then we let something catch our eye. And now we're drawn away from the place that God has. And then stuff starts to fall apart and life goes wrong and we get refocused and we get back. Things are going great. Things are wonderful. Things are awesome. Oh, something catch our eye. Then we start to be away again. And now three, four years has gone by and you've lost so much time because you've let something move you out of the place. You let someone move you out of the place. You let one phone call move you out of the place. You let one thing move you out of the place. You let one thing that happened move you out of the place. And now you look back and you said, how did I get here? Because you let something move you out of the place that God has. He said, Jacob, listen, I need you to get right back to Bethel. Who am I talking to this one? Some of you need to get back to the place where the presence of God is and you need to live there. Because if not, you're always going to have a subpar life. You will always have a subpar life without being in the authentic place where God has for you. And so Bethel is calling Jacob back. Jacob has to now shift and get, get back to that, to that place. And I know by the Holy Spirit that God is saying for many of us to learn how to live in that place. You've been too inconsistent in the things of God. Ooh, it's quiet this morning. You've been too inconsistent in the things of God. And you're wondering why the enemy keeps finding doors to reap havoc in your life. Because you've been inconsistent. But he says, now for what I'm doing in this fresh move, I need for you to settle there. Look at somebody and say, settle there. Which means this is now my home. This is what fits me. This is what's comfortable. And I'm not going anywhere. I'm learning how to settle in this place. And then we pick up in verse 2. This is where I've been trying to get to. So Jacob, look at this, told his household. <laughs> oh, God, I could drop the mic right there. Yes, Jacob told his household and all who were with him. Catch this, catch this. It means that there are some people God has assigned to go with you in this new place. You will know them by their willingness to build altars. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Which means every place, 
you don't have to go to by yourself. But there are those, my God have mercy. There are those that God has assigned to go with you into this new place. And you will know them by their willingness to build altars. Because if you're not willing to grow with me, then you can't go with me. Love you, you're awesome. But if you're not willing to grow with me, then you can't go with me. You got to willing to be cut like I was cut and bruised like I was bruised and walked on like I was walked on. You got to be willing to pay the price for growth if you want to go with me in this new season. Not that I don't love you, not that I don't think you're great, not that I don't think you're wonderful, but I will kiss you goodbye in a minute because when I think of the price I had to pay for the growth that God is doing inside of me I will run right into it and leave you behind because I paid a price yes, to be able to go into this new level and this new place so you can't get mad at folks I mean you, you can't because you, you grown but it, it, it don't make no sense for you to get mad because you wasn't willing to pay the price. You wasn't willing. <laughs> While I was in the gym working, you were at the house chilling. While they were in here praying, you were, at, you were on the phone gossiping. So you can't get mad. Okay, let me stop. You can't get mad when God opens up doors. And they now move into this next place that God has because you didn't pay the price for growth. And it is your lack of growth and maturity that will disqualify you from entering certain rooms. Oh, God. Notice what I said. I didn't say it was the devil. Tie my bow tie on a Honda. I didn't say it was the devil. It was your lack. It was your lack of growth and maturity that disqualifies you from having access into certain rooms. You chose not to grow. You chose not to pay the price. You chose not to do the, oh Lord, y'all quiet this morning, you? you? chose not to do the work. You chose not to fast. You chose not to show up. You chose, you, it, it was your decision, and now you have to live in the fruit of your own decision. Hey, just like I'm living the fruit of my own decision, you chose not to pay the price for growth. So, as God begins, begins to promote Ooh, Lord, I sense that in this room right here. Some of you looking at other folks side, sideways, how they get dead, how they get to do that. You don't know the price they paid. You don't know the cost of the oil in my alabaster box. You don't know what I had to go through. You don't know what I had to pay. You don't know what I had to sacrifice. You don't know what I had to give up. You don't know. You don't know, you don't know. You don't know. You don't know, you don't know. So you can't get mad at my blessing because you don't know the depth of my breaking. You don't know what God had to do who inside of me that caused me to get to this place that I'm in. You don't know. Tell somebody, you don't know. You don't know, child. You might think you know, but you don't know. You've only seen a glimpse of the real stuff. Of the real stuff that God had to do. Of the stripping away that God had to do. Of the breaking. Of the shame. Of the embarrassment. You don't know. Ooh, what God, What God had to do. You don't know the growth. When I didn't feel like it, I still had to show up. Yes, Woo, good God Almighty, somebody better come and get me. Even when I had to show up, you don't know what it's like. You pray and you study and you fast. And for me to preach a sermon, it takes me about eight to ten hours to do a decent sermon, a decent one. And you spend that time 
and you come to the church and you got 10 people sitting in there looking at you crazy. And you still preach. And you still preach to the glory fall. And you still preach like it's full. And you still preach because you know that God is working on something. And he's breaking and he's doing something inside of me. And after I've suffered a while, he's going to strengthen me. And establish me. And build me up. You don't know what it's like. You help people. You help people and you give them money and you help their lives get okay. And then they leave and talk about you like a dog, like you've never done anything for them. And still, you got to look at them in the face and say, God bless you. I love you. You're so wonderful. I'm praying for you. You don't know the Woo, Lord, I got to get out of this. You don't know the cost when you got to help people that hate you. Hey, I said, when well, you got to help people that hate you because Holy Spirit is saying, I'm doing something. I'm doing something. I need you to still call. I need you to still go because I'm doing something inside of you. You don't know the cost yes, of the oil. Just in this, whoo, whoo, I feel a wind that you don't know the cost for the oil. It's in this alabaster box. So now when God opens up the door and he promotes you, it's because of the price you paid for growth. And others, their maturity hasn't earned them the right to be in that room. Don't you take nobody with you who has not paid the price for growth, who's not earned the right to walk into that room with you because there's something about when you have suffered, you know what it takes to be in that room. There's another level of honor and respect that you have for the room because you knew what it cost. <laughs> That's why I behave a certain way in certain rooms because I know the cost that it took to get there. And if you haven't paid the price, Sorry, but you can't walk in this one. You can't walk in this one. You can't walk in this one. You can't walk in, you can't walk in this one until you get your soul together, till you get your mind together, till you get your conversation right. You can't walk in this one. No matter how much I love you, oh, you, can, you can't walk in this one. So the ball is in your court. What have you been doing with it? So which means that you got to be intentional about some things. So now when we look at verse 2, I saw a concept here that, that blessed my life. Um, a couple of months ago, I had an event I had to go to. And I went to the store and I bought a pair of pants. Normally I try them on. But I was kind of, you know, rushing. And so I just grabbed them, went home, tried them on, and noticed that they didn't fit. And the event was a few days away. So I knew the only way <laughs> that I was going to make these pants work for what I was getting ready to walk into is that I had to go find a place that could do alterations. Because alterations... They are made to improve the fit. And the process is done with a purposeful intent. Because of what I was getting ready to walk into, I had to have something that fit for the door I was getting ready to walk into. And the only way it was going to fit is if there were some alterations done. And when I look at the text, I see that God is saying, okay, Jacob and your whole house, I'm getting ready to let y'all walk into something that you have never walked in before. But the only way it's going to fit is if I make some alterations. Because what I've learned is that God doesn't alter his move to fit us. He alters us. To fit the move that he's getting ready to do. So when we look at the text, he says, okay, Jacob and your whole house, I got to make some alterations 
for this fresh move that you get ready to walk into. And uh, the first thing he says, the first alteration I got to make is I need you to get rid of your foreign gods. <laughs> I need you to get rid of your foreign gods. Now, at first I thought one, one thing. But when I looked a little deeper at the text, if you read Genesis 34, verse number 27 through 28, you will see that while in Shechem, Jacob and his house plundered all the inhabitants of Shechem. And they took their goods and they took their wealth as their own. But now, when they get ready to move into this fresh thing God is doing, God is saying, but I need you to get rid of your foreign gods, which means I need you to get rid of the success from the last season that you have now idolized in this season. Which means, yes, I did something before, and it was me, but you've been so busy worshiping the old that you can't receive the new. And you can't allow the signs of success from the past to now become an idol in this season. Yes, God moved. Yes, he did something great. Yes, 1470 was a wonderful thing God did. But that was the last season. So you can't idolize what God did in the last season and make you miss the fresh move that he's doing in this season. Lord, my old job was wonderful. My old job was great. I was making so much. But that was Shechem. That was the spoils from Shechem. God said, I got something. Oh, my last church did it this way. And my last church did it but that was Shechem. That was the last. Oh, y'all don't want me this morning. I ain't scared of you. I, I, I come right off the stage and look you right in the eye. I ain't scared of you. That, that was the old season. Woo, we have such a move of God and the way the glory fell. And the, but, but that was the. That was Shechem. Oh, my business. I was making so much money back then. I was balling. You look at what God, but that was the. You can't worship success. Of the old season. Woo, I'm going to get in trouble. I'm going to get in trouble. And you might not say this, but you think this. Oh, my old spouse, my old boyfriend, my old girlfriend used to be. You don't say it, but you, oh, God, I, oh, Lord, I just saw that. Let me get out of somebody's business. Can't even enjoy intimacy with your spouse because you're reminiscing about the old that was in Shechem. I'm in the house. And you're with them, but you're not really with them because you're idolizing what God did back in Shechem. And you're sitting here. And God said, I want to bless you. Like I never blessed you. I want to open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing Whew, that you don't even have room enough to receive. I want to do exceedingly and abundantly and above all you could ever ask or think. I want to blow your mind in this season, but I need you to stop idolizing what I did back in Shechem, back in the old place, idolizing success of the old that you can't enjoy the success of the new oh so he says get rid of your foreign gods and why was this important why was this important because the presence of a foreign god was an indication of divided loyalty the presence of a foreign god was an indication of divided loyalty which means I'm holding on to this foreign God because part of me is still loyal to it. Even though I'm in a new place, new season, new thing that God is doing, I'm still loyal to the old thing that God did. And he's saying, I need you to 
get rid of that foreign God. I need you to bury it and get it out of your life so that you can enjoy the fullness of what I have. And it's a foreign God. Why? Because it don't fit the new season. Foreign because it is not aligned. It's not analogous with the new that I'm doing in this season. That's why it's foreign. And everybody in here, you need to take inventory of what are the foreign gods I have that keep me from fully embracing. Woo, y'all, I know what I'm talking about. What are the foreign gods I got in this? It was this week, as a matter of fact. I was praying, and I started reminiscing about the old building at 1470 and all the things God did and the way he moved. And, and God says, don't get stuck there that you miss what I'm getting ready to do in this building. He says, I know you loved it. You were there all them years. And yes, I moved and I built some things there. But he said, you ain't seen nothing yet. He says, you ain't seen what I'm getting ready to do. You ain't seen the glory and the power that is getting ready to fall in this place. You ain't seen how you're getting ready to take over territory in this place. You ain't getting ready to see how you're going to change environments and communities through what I do through this place right here. Don't you get stuck, son, worshiping the old. That you miss what I'm getting ready to do in this place. Get rid of your foreign gods. And, and, I need to make some more alterations. I also need you to purify yourself. I need you to purify yourself because there's always a greater purity before a greater glory. I hope you, if you don't catch nothing else, I say there's always a greater purity before there's a greater glory. Maybe it's just me. But I've been sensing that the closer I get to him, the more stuff I got to peel off. The closer I get to him, the more stuff I got to rearrange and make sure it's in line with who he's called me to be. The closer I get to him, I got to purify myself, not based on what he's told you to do, but based on what he's told me to do. Just because it might be okay for you, don't mean it's okay for me. So I got to purify. I got to purify myself based on what he is telling me to do in this season for where I got to go and the place that he has for me. Look at somebody and say, purify yourself. Okay, now y'all said that week. Y'all said that week. Look right in the eye and say, purify yourself. Ooh, some of y'all scared because y'all like, I wonder if they saw what I did this week. I wonder if they saw what I did. No, 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 no. No, this is between you and God. God is saying, I need you to purify yourself and begin to shed off what is from the old so that you can now embrace the new. I need you to purify yourselves of everything that will contaminate body and spirit that you might perfect holiness out of reverence for God. That it's a moral and a spiritual cleansing that takes place. Or David said it like, like this. Create in me a clean heart. Yes, oh, God. Ooh. Ooh, I felt something on that. Create in me a clean heart. Or the old folks would say, God, if there be any wicked thing in me. God, I need you to take it out because they understood I want to be righteous in the sight of God. I want to be sanctified and meet for the master's use that I might be prepared unto every good work. God, I want you to go into every area, every crevice, every dark place and purify, 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 purify. That God, I give you everything and renew a right spirit within me and my life might be properly aligned with who you've called me to be. And then the last alteration, and I'm done, the last alteration says I need you to change your garments. I'm making alterations. 
I'm making alterations because there's a move happening. And I want to make sure that your heart and your character and your conduct is altered so that it can fit this new move. I'm making some alterations. And the last one I need to do is I need you to change your garments. Because sometimes the issue isn't what you're changing into, but what you're changing out of. Woo, Lord, I'm going to jump off this stage. Sometimes the issue isn't what you're changing into. It's what you're changing out of. Because most scholars believe that there was some residue from the time they were in Shechem that was on their garments. And they needed to remove some of the dirt and the grime that was an indication of the journey they had been on. So I need you to change your garments so that you don't show any signs of the journey that you've been on. I need you to, I need you to wash your clothes so that they look new. So that it don't, so that you don't look like the place that you've been. I need you to change your garments so that when other people see you, you look totally brand new. Like you don't, like you haven't been through anything because I took time to change my garments so that now I can fit the new place that I'm into. And the Lord, the Lord told me to tell you that this is the time you have to be okay with changing your garment so that you have a fresh look for a fresh, for a fresh move. So that you look new for this new move. And what I love about the text is that garment in Hebrew can also be translated mantle. Okay, I got to So I need you to ooh, put on a new mantle for what I'm doing in this season. Oh God, who am I talking to? There are new mantles that are resting. There's new mantles that are falling. There is new mantles that God has for you. The old anointing was great for the last season, but there is a new mantle that God has resting in this place so that you might be able to operate like you've never operated in function. Because about a new mantle, a new mantle, a new mantle, a new mantle that is happening for you in this season so that you can really begin to see the fullness of what God has but I had to wash oh that's what's been going on some of you have been wondering how come I can't be around everybody right now because he's been washing your garment how come I can't talk to the same old people because he's been washing your garments how come I can't do the same old thing because he's been washing my garments how come I can't entertain the same stuff because he's been washing Ooh, shit. Oh, he's been washing my garments how come I had to change the way I handle my money because he's washing my garments because there's millionaire flow coming and I gotta have a brand new brand new habit for this brand new flow I've been washing my garments for this move that he has change your garments because God says I'm not going to let you into this new move with the dirty garment that, that it's your responsibility to change this garment in order for you to see what I really want to do in your life in my closing After they made some alterations. Is there anybody here you know God's making some alterations? No, no, no. I mean, you know God's really been making some alterations. <laughs> Sometimes you look in the mirror and you say, I don't even recognize myself because God's been doing some alterations. I don't even respond the same way. 
that I used to because he's been making some alterations. And as God made the alterations for Jacob and his household. Okay, you, you stay. As he made the alterations to everything that was connected to him. If you're really connected to me, you'll make alterations like I'm making alterations. Woo, Lord Jesus. You know, because a lot of times there are people that give lip service, but don't have real heart service. As a matter of fact, the scripture says it like this. These people draw not at me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. And so God is saying it's time out for a lot of lip service. That if you're really connected, if you're really a part, if you really got me like you say you do, if you're really with me like you say you are, you'll be making alterations. Like I'm making alterations. So the sign that you're really with me is the changes that you make, not what you say. Jacob, you can rise to your feet. I got to stop. Ooh, Lord, my time is up. Come on, come on. Come on. I got to stop. I got to stop. I'm not done, but I got to stop. I got to stop. I got to stop. I got to stop because I sent something. In this place, some of you, <sighs> the key for you and all those with you in this season is alterations. It's the building of the altar. It's the building of the heart posture. It's the building of the character, the building of the real change that takes place. The altar, the place of real transformation is the, it's the... <sighs> It's the alterations that happen. I told you we're in the season that God's now separating the wheat from the tear. That the authenticity of those who are in this thing for real, for real, will be seen. Because God's calling all of us back to the altar. So Jacob, Jacob, in verse 3, Jacob. Then... Let us, you see it? Let us arise and go to Bethel. Just like Jacob was being altered, everybody with him was being altered. And the only way they could make the move is that they allowed alterations to happen. That's why he said, let us. Because we couldn't move into Bethel. We couldn't move into the house of God. We couldn't move in the place where the glory drips like fresh rain. We, we couldn't move into the house of God where the glory cloud fills the place. We couldn't move into the place where the glory it's so heavy that when the person in the wheelchair gets on the property, the presence of God is so heavy that they're healed. We, we couldn't move into the place called Bethel. We couldn't move where we see miracles and signs and wonders. We couldn't move in the place where you see a church having existential impacts. Well, churches buying up neighborhoods. You, you, we couldn't move into the place where the church is buying car lots and blessing single moms with debt-free cars. You, we, we couldn't, we couldn't, we couldn't move into a place where the church is building unwed mothers' homes and the church is building hospitals and and oh, we couldn't move. We couldn't move. We couldn't move into a place where the church has an entrepreneur academy where we teach our young six-year-olds and seven-year-olds 
the power of faith and trust and how to build a business idea wrapped with prayer and anointing. We, we couldn't, we couldn't, we couldn't move into that place where there's multiple sites and multiple locations. We couldn't, we couldn't move. Oh, I want you to hear me, church. You, we couldn't move into that place where you have government officials sitting in your services. You couldn't, we couldn't move to the place where you have entertainers sitting in your services. The people that you admire from afar is sitting on your front row. Because they need God just like you need God. We couldn't, oh God, that is your shit. We couldn't move to the place where they fly their private jets in on Sunday morning just to be in the house of God. And then get on their private jet and fly out after Sunday morning service because they're looking for an authentic move. Of, they're looking for a place called Bethel. We couldn't move to that place. And you just wanted to come in and have church. When God says, I got a community, I got a region, I got a city, I got a nation, oh, that needs a church to build an altar. I need, that's what I need. That a church can bless individuals with debt-free homes. That's not just prayed for, but they paid for. See y'all, 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 y'all not right. <sighs> that I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't get a church where there's a grocery store where the members can come in and get free groceries. Let us arise and go to Bethel. I. We'll build an altar there unto God. Look at this. Who answered me in my day of distress. He has been with me wherever I have gone. If you know that God has answered you in the day of your distress, I need you to open up your mouth and begin to lift your hands. And begin to thank the Lord who has answered you in the day of your distress, who has been with you wherever you have gone, who has given you the grace and the fortitude to make alterations, who has been there to help you get rid of your foreign gods, or who has been there to help you purify yourself, who has been there to help you change your garments, who has been there to help you do an internal work, who has been there to help you all change and begin to shift your life into the fullness of the place that is called you to. If you know that you serve a God, let us. I said, let us arise. Let us arise. Let us arise and go to Bethel where we build altars. Build altars. Woo, shut up, I say. But we build altars. It changes the trajectory of this next season of our lives. I keep sensing this. I keep sensing this that as you continue. To build altars, your life is not going to look the same by the end of this year. I know, I know, I know, I know. Some, somebody, I'll tell you what I know. Life is not going to look the same by the end of this year because you became committed to building altars. Can you lift your hands and begin to tell God, I am committed? to build an altar. Lord, I'm committed to make the alterations. 
I'm committed to, Lord, let you in every area. <laughs> oh, God, even those areas that I tried to hide from you that I know that are there, God, I'm, I'm open. And I want to let you in every area of my life.